Welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. We are now on module number 10 and lecture number 3 and this module number 10 particularly focused on oral presentation and this is the third lecture which I am giving on oral presentation. Overall, in the past two lectures, we discussed about techniques, strategies by which one can overcome fear. Fear is the major deterrent against a person who wants to become successful in giving a oral presentation. So, how to overcome fear that was the focus on the first lecture that I delivered. I particularly pointed out that fear can come through the mental, psychological, even the physical outlook. And then it has to be attacked, approached through these three aspects. Mentally one has to keep a very positive frame of mind, one has to avoid all the negative chatter. Emotionally one has to think that all the people who are there among the audience, they are all one's own friends, they are not there as enemies. Both mentally and emotionally one has to realize that you are there as a public speaker or as an oral presenter because the audience have bestowed in you the position of a leader. Now, once you realize that you are given this leadership to you, so you are the one who are in control over the whole situation. You cannot expect the audience to come to your rescue, especially in a case when somebody from the audience is putting you some very tough and embarrassing question. The audience rather are expecting that you being the leader, you take control over the situation and then you emerge as a very winning and competent leader. You will be surprised to know that even in oral presentation, I am talking about leadership qualities. When I was talking uh, about uh, GD, I was talking about leadership qualities. But throughout, if you look at communication skills, in a sense, it is helping you to develop yourself, your own leadership qualities. And this is one activity of communication skills, public speaking, oral presentation, where you just bring those qualities to the forefront. Now, once you manifest these qualities, apart from doing certain other things like preparation, in which you take care of your body language, just look at the mirror or video your presentation, look at the pitfalls, see what you yourself cannot look at your own image, your own presentation and even instead of asking your friends, you yourself can correct those errors. Now, apart from this preparation, there is also this subject preparation. Nobody can help you if you are not thorough with the subject. So, you have to be 100 percent thorough with the subject or conversely, you have to select a subject that you are deeply interested in, that you are so passionate about. So, do not select a subject that you wholeheartedly want to discuss with the audience. You should do anything to avoid that kind of situation, where you are talking about something which you yourself do not believe. This means, once you know your subject, you should also have belief in your subject. If you do not have belief in your subject, you will not be able to deliver it with force and effectiveness. So, you should believe in what you are doing. Apart from that, some very minor physical tips that I gave you just, uh, just like taking your breath very deeply before going and doing that repeatedly. So, that can actually calm your nerves. Then there are also other tips given like you should know your audience, you should know the level of the audience before you are delivering the content. And then you are also told that you should go to the venue, you should have a view, preview, review of the venue and you should be able to give your presentation rehearsal in the venue itself. This again increases your confidence level because remember I told you that it is unfamiliarity with the situation unfamiliarity with the venue that is actually making this public speaking as number one fear even among Americans. We have two kinds of self, there is this social self and there is this presentation self. 
and of course, psychologists would say that there are many other kinds of selves. So, that is a different thing. As far as oral presentation or public speaking is concerned, we can think of self under two categories, the social self, the presentation self. Now, whatever I said in the first lecture, where I said that a person is able to converse with his friends very easily and is able to narrate any incident effortlessly in a canteen, in his own house, in a park, in a movie theatre, on the bus stop. So, all, on all these occasions, if you see, the person is actually involved in his social self and socializing skills are something that we learn when we happen to be a small kid. Whereas, presentation self is something that we are not made to learn so easily. There are situations, occasions in which kids do not get an opportunity to train their presentational self. So, what happens when they reach college level, when they reach the formal education level, they get so nervous. Again, they try to avoid this coming to in terms with presentation self. So, it goes on like that, even when they go to their offices, even when they become business people, even when they become professionals, they tend to avoid this. Now, presentation self is the formal self that we need to put before with all the leadership qualities manifested, with all the formal aspects of presentation, especially in terms of oral presentation manifested before the audience. Now, it is this presentation self, once you are able to manifest in proper manner, you tend to become a professional. So, on the first lecture, we talked about overcoming fear and towards the end as well as in the second lecture, I discussed about developing confidence and developing confidence basically comes from thorough subject preparation, knowledge of the audience, knowledge of one's own self, knowing the fact that there is none in the world who is without fear for public speaking. There is nobody who can boast of saying that he can start a speech without little bit of nervousness. Even expert actors, veteran speakers say that that initial few minutes they have problems. But I also told you to realize that it is only those initial few minutes and once you become a very seasoned speaker, you realize that it is not few minutes, it is just few seconds. In some case, it is just fraction of second. In some case, it is that first word. It may be good morning or hello, whatever you are saying at the first time, your nervousness is overcome. Just breaking that ice at the first moment. Once you do that, you warm up, you warm yourself up, you warm the audience and then it starts triggering. Okay. So, about developing confidence also I spoke in the previous lecture and then towards the conclusion, I mentioned about body language. I talked about how body language is a very integral part of oral presentation and the audience all the time when you think that your information is reaching them 100 percent through words, the audience are actually taking cues, the audience are actually taking what you are telling through visuals, through the way you are communicating your ideas using your body language, using your gestures, by looking at your posture, by maintaining eye contact with you, by even looking at the way you have dressed for the occasion. So, all these things contribute to the overall effectiveness and quality of your presentation. Now, having said that about body language, let us look at some more details of body language and then look at how you can use visuals such as pictures or if you are using a PowerPoint presentation, what are some guiding principles for using that. And towards the end, I will just give you some final tips and then try to conclude this lecture. So, once I conclude, hopefully it would have given you sufficient information, tips about becoming a professional in terms of delivering an oral presentation. Now, to continue with our talk on body language, I would like to begin with telling you some do's 
and don'ts about body language. Now, what are the do's? In some of the cases, I am just repeating, reiterating what I said. First and foremost, face the audience. Now, later I am going to tell you what I what do I mean by this. When I say face the audience, do not turn back and face the blackboard. Okay. Do not show yourself on the sideways. Just face them all the time. Show your face. Let them look at you. You look at them. Maintain eye contact. There is not a single moment where you are showing your back. Now, in case you have to write something on the board, Avoid 100 percent turning towards this board, but see how diagonally you can still face them. In case you are not able to face them, when you are writing on the board, at least you try to say it when you are writing, so that they are following you at least at the audio level, at the voice level, but still looking at them then and there, breaking the monotony of writing continuously by showing your back should be avoided. Now, when you face the audience, try to look at each person in the audience. Again, it is easy to say this, but for an amateur and inexperienced speaker or for the speaker who is going to deliver his her oral presentation for the first time, it is not that easy to look at each person in the audience. So, if you remember in the previous lecture, I mentioned to you that look at somebody who is appearing to be friendly with you. There is always some over enthusiastic people, there is always somebody who is very friendly, concerned, generous, they are on the front bench or they are on the back bench, sometimes they sit on the middle bench also. So, look at those people, focus on them who are quite friendly and supportive towards you and then slowly you start looking at others also. Now, there are so many methods, they say that you focus first on the front ones, then on the back and then come back to the front as if you are making a triangle and then make the triangle in the reverse order. So, you focus on somebody on the right side, then on the left side and then come to the center point. Now, keep varying this, instead of looking at each one directly, especially if it is going to become a big crowd, at least focus on some points where the whole group gets a feeling that you are looking at them. So, that focus and looking at each person as much as possible is very important to do in terms of body language. Then, people think that when you are coming to public speaking or oral presentation, people have the misconception that they are orators and then they are supposed to deliver the talk without even looking at the notes, without even having notes. So, there is this kind of misconception that if I am to be treated as a leader, if I am to be seen as a model, I should not look at my notes. Now, this is a misconception especially when it is about oral presentation, especially when it is in formal situation, not looking at your notes unless you have memorized it so thoroughly, but even if you have memorized it so thoroughly, just occasional glance at the notes is very important and thinking that uh, I will create an impression that I am a master and I can say something even without looking at the notes, it is not required for oral presentation. Maybe for an impromptu speech, where you are asked to say something without giving prior thought, without even organizing that in your mind. So, probably you can attempt it for an extempore speech, but even that, if you ask a trained speaker, yesterday's lecture I said that Mark Twain for instance wanted three days for a three minute impromptu speech. So, even for that trained people, the thing that they want to do without notes, they are not going to accept it without giving them some preparation time. What they would do is, they would jot down the points mentally, they would organize it mentally, but it appears that they are doing everything off the hand. Now, 
glance at notes occasionally. I am making two points. One, do not hesitate to glance at your notes. Do not think that it is a bad thing to look at your notes before the audience and do not think that even if you are a teacher who is presenting, do not, do not think that students will think that I do not know anything, my mind is blank. So, I have to look at the notes all the time. Do not look at the notes all the time, but look at it occasionally, then and there. There is no point to hide it. So, some people write on their uh, fingers, they write on their palm, okay. they sometimes put small notes hidden in their hand. Okay. Now, these things could be avoided, you can even keep the notes properly. But look at the notes occasionally, because you have already mentally mapped the whole presentation and you have organized it thoroughly and you have no fear whatsoever in thinking that you will lose the momentum, you may lose some important points. It is only when you want to conclude, when you want to recheck in between or when you are summarizing, you give an occasional glance to check whether you have done everything correctly or missed some important point. So, use notes, but occasionally, glance at the notes, but occasionally and overall smile. Now, when you smile, I keep telling this that it generates not only enthusiasm in you, but also in the audience. So, that you should do and a related thing uh, with regard to this one, if you are using a PowerPoint presentation is that. Most of the times, the presentation podium is somewhere like this and then the PowerPoint LCD projector is kept somewhere else. Now, if you have to move from one place to another place and then you go there, press the PowerPoint, then you come back, again you go and press it. Now, what happens is audience would lose interest. You cannot make them spellbound because so many breaks and pauses are there and technically they are punctuated, technically they are causing this disturbance. Now, on such occasions, what you can do is, you can ask a friend, you can ask a colleague. So, now this colleague will help you to just identify the transition point or probably even you rehearse that with that colleague, with that friend and when you say next or even without saying that, when you make a slight pause the person goes to the next slide. Now, this also controls your body language, because when you rush to change the slide, you show your back and when you think that it is messed up, so you are you have already gone to the next point and the slides have not moved and if you are the one to do that, again you are tensed, you are nervous. So, your mind is more focused on moving the slides than actually gaining momentum with the talk. You can easily avoid that by seeking the help of an operator, a friend, a colleague. Nowadays, there are remotes to have a, a PowerPoint presenter, which can be operated by using a battery and from standing at a distant place, you can still uh, move the slides of your PowerPoint. So, it is like hands free. So, you do not have to go and touch it literally but from a distance you can do that. This again gives you a lot of comfort in terms of body language. So, keep that point in mind, especially when you are going to use uh, PowerPoint. To continue with some more do not'ts, I talked about what you should do in terms of body language, what you should not do in terms of body language, do not hold on to anything. People have a tendency to hold on to something because of their insecurity. Now, the best gesture as far as body language is concerned with regard to your hand is to keep it open. Open hands indicate that you are free, you are not inhibited, you are playing and you are not hiding anything, you are having very good rapport with the audience, you are not keeping any barriers. But when you close it, when you hide it or when you hold on to something such as let us say there is a chair and then you hold it with lot of grip. If there is a table, you hold it, you hold a file, you hold a pen firmly, you hold a ruler, 
you hold this pointer stick, anything that you hold so firmly will indicate your insecurity. So, leave the palms open, do not hold on to anything that creates a very negative body image. So, avoid that. Then in the previous slide I said do not hesitate to use notes, but when I say do not hesitate I should also caution you do not make overuse of notes so much so it becomes a reading session not a presentation session. So, what happens some people tend to read directly from their notes or if it is a powerpoint that is displayed on the screen they tend to read word by word from the screen or they look at the notes and then uh, from the notes again they read word by word. Now, this should be avoided. Look at me if I just stop looking at you and then look at the screen and simply read everything do not read directly from your notes screen after some time you will lose interest. So, I am also trying to look at it, but I am glancing at it occasionally and when I have to focus your attention on the powerpoint that I have kept then I am using a pointer and indicating to you and telling you that look at this, but other than that if it is just to uh, indicate to me that this is the next point that I should cover I just glance at it, but then I do not read exactly from this unless I want to give you emphasis. So, do not read directly from your notes or from the screen avoid that because for the simple reason it will cause monotony among the audience. So, avoid that at all cost. Now, overall remember you need to get the attention of the audience, you need to make them receptive, you need to keep them spell bound as if you have cast a magic spell on them and they are just frozen and their mind and body everything is alert and they have lent their ears literally and figuratively to you. Do whatever is possible, but keep them spellbound. Now, when you look at the screen, when you start reading the notes, you are breaking the spell and then you are giving them chance for breathing freely and then looking at each other talking to them. So, avoid that do not give them a chance. Then do not put hands in pockets. Now, hands I said it is open, but if you put inside the pockets you are again using a kind of defensive gesture your hand movement is not seen. So, you are not able to correlate your thoughts non-verbally. So, do not do that. Sometimes if you have an overcoat people tend to put that within the coat pockets also whether inside the pant pockets or the coat pockets it should be avoided. Then sometimes people tend to just turn back and then just look at the screen. So, they will just turn and then just look at the screen for a long time. So, this again should be avoided okay, just turning and then looking at the screen and then not doing anything just keeping a long pause that should be avoided. Then if you have an examiner if there is a professor sitting there who is examining you. So, you should not look at the professor or examiner only. So, this happens when students are giving presentations and then they are being examined by somebody. This can happen even when you go to your professional setup and then your boss or the funding agency is just looking at your presentation and then there are so many people in the audience, but you tend to focus only on that particular person. And if that person happens to sit on the right side corner, you always focus your attention on that person and you are cut off from the rest of the audience. Now, looking at that professor, that examiner, that particular person should be avoided. Maintain eye contact throughout and to all the people among the audience. So, focusing on one particular person should be avoided at all cost. Now, having said so much about body language in general, let us look at some intricate aspects, the soft skills aspect, the voice quality component which is also part of non-verbal communication. What should you do and what you should not do in terms of this? Now, speak loudly and clearly even though there may be mic that can take your voice out to the audience. There is a level of loudness 
you are expected to speak, which is higher than the tone in which people are speaking just below you on the audience side. Now, speak loudly, but at the same time clearly enunciate, pronounce each and every word, do not eat out literally some of the words. Speak slowly, but with confidence. Some people have the fear that if they speak slowly, they may forget something. So, they speak very fast. Speaking very fast instead of indicating confidence, it actually indicates insecurity. So, speak slowly, but speak with confidence. Emphasize important points. So, if you have a highlighter, you can use the highlighter. If you have a PowerPoint, you can use this highlighter to show those points. But if you can do that by speaking louder or by lowering your volume, so people will be able to understand. Now, the next point is a very important point. So, emphasize important points either by slowing down and or speaking louder. This variation can make the audience understand that, okay, now it is an important point. Now, it is a normal point is discussing in normal tone. Then, if you are in a group, sometimes that is, uh, as it happens among students, what we do is we ask them to give team presentation. There is a project report submitted and then about 4 or 5 students are given half an hour, 40 minutes, 20 minutes and all the students should come and give a presentation on the same topic dividing some chapters or dividing some parts of the presentation. Now, once this is given, 5 persons giving a talk on the same topic, it is very important that a transition is made to the next speaker. What does it mean? The first speaker very clearly comes and introduces the team and then tells, let us say hypothetically there are 5 important aspects to the discussion. The first aspect will be discussed by him and the second will be discussed by so and so, third, fourth, fifth, he introduces all the people and the topics which they are supposed to talk. Now, once he is leaving, it is imperative on his part to say, now I have done this, now the second part of this lecture, of this talk, the second topic, the next aspect will be discussed by my friend, by my colleague by my classmate, by my friend, so and so. So, he will come and discuss this part. I request him to come and do that. So, that transition has to be given. So, if you just leave and then somebody comes and there is a gap, again audience would feel the monotony and you will be breaking the spell that you have cast before on the audience. So, do not attempt that. What you should not do at all in terms of your voice quality? You should not race through your speech as if you are uh, sitting on a super fast train. You should not assume that you have to race it through, you have to run very fast and finish. So, it is not a race. Overall and repeatedly, I will be telling you that it is overall about communicating your message effectively to the audience. By racing, what you will do is, you will be finishing something within time, but given that time, whether the audience was able to understand what you tried to cover within that time will still remain a question. Many would not have understood what you are about to convey if you are just racing through your talk. Do not read directly from note screen, which I explained before and do not talk too fast and do not talk deliberately slow. Now, there are people who come to the presentation with less preparation or almost no preparation. There is no uh, visual aids like PowerPoint. They have not even taken notes. They have taken it very lightly thinking that they can go and say something. But the moment they come for one hour talk, within 10 minutes all the points were covered. Now, once the person realizes that the last point will be covered in another 5 minutes, what the person will do is to talk deliberately slow, very slowly the person speaks, so that the given time slot is covered. Now, in such occasion, it is better to finish your speech before time, 
and encourage the audience to ask some questions instead of going deliberately slow. So, avoid that going deliberately slow should be avoided. You should also avoid mumbling, saying something as if you are murmuring or saying something within your mouth and people are not able to hear it. So, you should enunciate, you should pronounce the words clearly, do not mumble. And one more important point which you should always keep in mind is do not exceed the time limit. That again calls for professional qualities. In fact, it is something that you should train yourself if you really want to become a professional. Time is precious, time is money and every part of our life is integrated with time and every socializing part is linked with the other socializing aspects of other people. So, if you are wasting 10 minutes of your time and if there are 100 people among the audience, you multiply that 10 minutes into 100 and you are wasting that much time of the people who are involved there. You think it is just 10 minutes, but then it is resulting in hours on mass. Now, more than that, it is not just about wasting time, it is about thinking clearly and presenting your ideas in a very coherent manner and planning that with lot of rehearsal and nowadays in the technically advanced PowerPoint where you can even set the timing and check your timing and keeping some extra minute before that time limit that was given to you. Now, if you can finish it within the stipulated time frame, I would say that you are professional at least with regard to the time that is given to you. Many people when they come to the last 5 minutes actually realize that they have not covered the most important point. This happens in class lectures also. We are all used to teachers telling us that I am going to conclude this is the last point, but then this person speaks for another 5 minutes and the students are restless the bell has already rung, then the teacher says no the next most important point just one minute, one minute all of you sit down and after that I will take attendance, just sit down, sit down. So, everybody sits and then he goes for another 10 minutes, then again students get up, he says last point another 5 minutes. Now, the lecture has not ended and the most important point was delivered when half of the students have left, the remaining half were just doing something with their bag kept their notes inside or mentally, emotionally they have shut themselves off. Nobody was paying attention and the most important point was delivered after the time limit was exceeded and the audience was not in a frame of mind to receive anything from the speaker. So, that sin, that crime of wasting the time, exceeding the time limit, not adhering to the time limit that is given to you indicates lack of professionalism, indicates your insensitivity towards audience timings and then shows that you are not thorough in your subject and just because you are not thorough what you have done is you have taken extra time to reach that point, but that extra time whether you digress, whether you made the uh, audience happy that did not matter because the main point was not delivered after the time limit was completely over. So, this even I am telling towards the concluding part should be kept in mind at the foremost that whenever you are training yourself professionally keep time in mind first. Your presentation if they say that it is 1 hour it should be completed in 55 minutes or at least within 1 hour you will be very much appreciated. If it is 10 minutes try to finish it within 10 minutes. So, keep the time frame in mind. Now, once you are able to control the time frame, there are certain other things you should not never do at all overall if it is an oral presentation. Just to sum up quickly, one thing I kept telling you is never turn your back on audience. Just like this guy, if you just turn your back and especially if you are thinking on something, okay, so it looks very awkward, it looks very ugly. 
and never slouch. So, instead of looking at them straight, keeping your shoulders upright, when you slouch, so you indicate a feeling that you are lazy, you are not thoroughly prepared. Look at this person slouching. Yeah. So, there is a bend and the bend is minimizing the eye contact, eyes are looking at the ground, eyes cannot actually maintain contact with the audience. So, the person is bent looking at something at the ground and not focusing on the audience. It is indicating maybe defeat, it is indicating that maybe I am sorry, I am insecure, it indicates so many negative thoughts. So, that slouch should be avoided and keeping hands in pockets. Again, it indicates lot of negativity, lot of defensiveness which I explained before. So, basically keep these three things in mind and now let us discuss little more on the use of visuals that is although they say that a picture is worth 1000 words instead of saying something using 1000 words if you show a picture the audience would understand very easily but how effectively do you use it picture does not mean any picture so, you are talking about uh, computers and then just to attract the audience, you put the picture of a model dressed in bikini. Now, this will of course, attract the attention of the audience, but you lost them because they totally digressed. You fed something else in their mind, so completely they lost their interest in the technical aspect of what you are discussing. So, when it comes to visuals, you should clearly understand the purpose and you should know how you should use the visuals. Now, what is the main purpose of using visuals? Visuals are used to illustrate key points. Now, the frontal section of some equipment for instance or the inner part of something, the bifurcated view, heart for instance. So, you want to show the inner part. So, any number of words that you would use to describe those aspects, if you show a picture, it makes it very clear. So, it to it is used to illustrate key points and then it is used to reinforce verbal message. So, I say something, but I want to make it effective. I also show the picture part of it, the visual part of it and stimulate audience interest. Sometimes, mere verbal content becomes boring and we learn so many things by looking at using our eyes. So, feed something to the eyes, give some good images. So, that stimulates the audience interest and focus audience attention. When you put some visuals, apart from what they hear from you, their attention is also focused. Like now, when I am saying something, I am also putting visual, visually the words. So, when you are even listening to me and when you look at this, your attention is focused further. So, this is the main purpose of visuals, illustrating key points, reinforcing verbal message, stimulating audience interest, focusing audience attention. But this should be done in a very positive and integral manner, which is quite relevant to the topic that you are discussing. When I say focus audience attention or stimulate audience interest, you can also do that by showing a picture that is totally irrelevant, but they will focus on the picture, but not on the lecture. So, when I say focus audience attention, I mean that you should be able to make them focus on your message using that picture. So, when you show the picture or the image or the graphic representation of what you are discussing. So, they should be able to look at that without getting distracted towards what you are saying. So, I will just give you more details on visuals in the coming slides. I would like to give some guidelines for the use of visuals. Now, first and foremost, when you are using PowerPoint for instance, do not put long complete sentences, use bullets or bullet points. Now, in a bullet points, what you have will be only keywords and phrases. So, what does it mean when you are using visuals, 
remember that you are using them as images, icons. Now, when you are doing this, you do not have to use grammatically correct sentences, complete sentence using preposition, article and all that. Use only the keywords, show them the important phrases, but you should have either memorized <coughs> or thought of what you should talk about those phrases in advance. For the audience, you will show only the keywords and phrases, so that they can use as a kind of mental support while attending to your lecture. When you are presenting on PowerPoint again particularly, use appropriate font size. Now, when I am doing it for a small class and then when I am doing it for a larger audience in the auditorium, obviously my font size will change. But generally, it is suggested that if you are going for the templates which are given there already, they would not let you go below 24 inside. Rare cases, it would allow you up to 22 something like that. But the standard font size that we talk of when you are presenting something in text form formally, the Times New Roman in technical report, 12 size. Now, that 12 size will not do when you are coming for PowerPoint presentation. It has to be about 24 inside the body and title can go anything above 40 also. So, if you are not that experienced, use the templates which are given, automatically it will set the size. Do not increase, decrease the content. Okay. If you have to use more on a single slide, avoid that and take it to next slide. So, as far as PowerPoint is concerned, using more slides is not a problem. So, you can take it to the next slide and always remember, even when you take it to the next slide, you will use appropriate font size that will be visible to the front one as well as the back one. Apart from that, use appropriate colors. Now, what does it mean? Suppose you are going to deliver it in daylight and then the windows are open and there are no curtains, darkness cannot be created in the room and it is completely uh, quite spacious and so much of light is coming inside. It is better you use a dark background such as blue or black or dark brown maroon contrasted with fonts which will be white or cream or yellow. So, that that dark on the background and light on the background which is dark. So, that white and black, yellow and blue or even some slight light green color on this background would be visible in daylight. So, if it is to be shown in evening time in normal light setting and slightly the room can be darkened, then you are free to use anything of your choice, but preferably again they would suggest you go for white background and use any colors that you are interested in. Use different colors when you are trying to highlight, use different fonts when you want to highlight something, use certain other stylistics such as underlining, using italics. So, use these ones to seek the attention of the audience when you want to say something with emphasis. So, that is about appropriate colors and size. Having done this, it is very important that you spell check every slide. You cannot do it manually all the time. So, use the spell check option that is given on the computer itself, on the software itself. So, when you do that, even if you have done it manually, you would have missed some of the spellings. So, when you recheck it using the computer, it would again underline something. So, then you may think twice. So, what is the spelling? So, you check it again. Most of the times you have gone wrong. So, correct the spelling. Uh, the same thing goes for some kind of proposal that you have presented or a report that you have presented for which you are given marks. Suppose your presentation is to be credited for let us say some 50 marks 
and then in the 50 marks definitely 10 marks will go in this font size the way you are presenting including spelling mistakes. You cannot say that was a typographical error, it, uh, uh, I, I cannot be accounted for that. Now, the examiner thinks that is your laziness that you did not bother about spell checking. So, you are the one who typed it and you should own the mistakes. So, you cannot escape from spelling mistakes. So, take responsibility for that, check it from every slide. Check visibility. Now, once you have taken care of font size, obviously it will be visible, but then it is worth that you go to the auditorium in advance, try to project it on the screen and go to the back row, extreme left corner, extreme right corner on some of the corners on the from the last uh, bench. Now, look at the presentation, can you see it clearly, is it visible to you, if it is not you are there a day before, you are there an hour before, very quickly change the font, increase the slides if required, but change the font size, recheck the visibility before you actually start. By not doing, you are going to lose touch with those precious audience who are on the back rows. So, check your visibility and once you do that, speak to the audience having set everything there, but not to the visual. That means, do not look at the visual here, do not look at the visual on the board, do not look at that visual and lose yourself and talk about it. Look at the audience all the time, it is they who will decide to look at the visual or when you tell them to look at it, they will look at it. When you divert their attention, they will do that, but when you seek their attention back to your message, they will come back to you. So, you be with touch all the time, but with the audience not with the visuals. So, keep that in mind, you should speak to them all the time. Now, in case you are making some adjustments, in case you are adjusting something, do not mumble, do not talk something when the eye contact is completely lost. Make that minor adjustment, make that transition, make that movement, whatever is required when you are setting it up, but avoid talking. because audience will be focused on what you are doing and they may not listen to what you are saying and the import of what you are trying to say will be lost while making that adjustment. So, stop talking when you are making that adjustment. In fact, you can use polite markers, you can say excuse me, I will just make this adjustment and come back to you or let me adjust this for a while and then make a pause, you adjust it then get back to them. Now, if you are using a picture, if you are using a chart, if you are hanging it on the blackboard or if you are showing something on the screen or if you are using an overhead projector and displaying some picture. Now, once that point is completed, do not leave it for long time, just take the picture out. You finish the point, the picture was used as an integral support to demonstrate, illustrate your point, that is all. Take the picture, the audience need not look at it more than once you have finished your uh, point conveying your message. So, do not leave that on the slide for a longer time. So, just remove it once you have done it and then you should have decided how to advance the slides even before coming to the audience in your rehearsal. As I said before, nowadays PowerPoint gives you timing also. So, if it is a time bound discussion, even you plan timing for each slide and put content accordingly and even the way you want to uh, show it. Do you want to make the letters appear one by one on mouse click? Do you want the whole slide to display everything? Do you want the picture to come only when you click the mouse? Do you want the animation to enter after 3 seconds, after 1 minute, 2 minute? So, decide all these things, how it should appear and then be ready before the audience. Now, supporting materials, so other than uh, uh, just uh, PowerPoint, the pictures that you are using, the images that you are showing, ensure the day before or on the day, whether they are visible in the back row 
whether they are relevant to your presentation. As I said, most of the times when you look at uh, car advertisements for instance, you will find very uh, skimpy, skimpily dressed models sitting on the car. What is the relevance to those good looking models on the car? So, no relevance at all. Should you do that kind of thing in your presentation? Remember you are not advertising something, you are there to convince them. If you remember the uh, previous lecture where I said about the purpose of delivering a talk, apart from entertaining, <coughs> you are there to inform them, you are there to convince them, you are there to persuade them and then influence them. So, when you show something which is totally irrelevant, you lose that control. So, do not do that. And then if they are very short, check whether they are too short and check whether they are too long so that they do not distract the audience too much from the oral portion of the presentation. If it is longer than what you are saying, sometimes it can distract. So, ensure that it is short and sweet. More than that, coming back to the time aspect, it should be well timed in relation to your presentation. It appears exactly at the time when you want it to appear and it appears exactly for the seconds or the minutes you want it to appear. So, you should have controlled it even before showing it. Now, look at this, you should avoid complicated derivation at any cost. This is something that you should watch out for. Even I think for a max professor or a physics or a chemistry or a science or an engineering uh, professor, at a quick glance when you are showing it as a uh, display on the screen, I do not think it is that easy to understand. Now, what you can do is you should avoid this kind of complicated derivation and show the whole thing in terms of pie chart, bar chart, use some other form of representation and at all cost avoid complicated derivation. Now, in case you still have to show this because this is very important and integral to your uh, presentation, then divide that into parts, inject lot of verbal content your words in between and break the monotony of making it appear as a junk of equations and derivations. So, that you should avoid, avoid complicated derivation. And then overall, how would you organize? Are there some organizing strategies? I hinted at that in the first lecture on this, but then just as a recapitulation and then quick uh, reverting to your attention. Remember that you can use chronological order. So, chronology amounts to the historiographic representation. Somebody was born, then he grew up, then he got a job, he got married, he got children, then he died, then he was buried. So, the chronological order. So, you can have that. The problem cause solution. So, there was so much of population. So, the government introduced some population control methods. So, today you are talking about one of the population control methods which is proving to be harmful in one particular area. So, what will be the solution to that? That is your main contention argument. You can also talk about pros and cons, for and against, advantages and disadvantages, advantages of internet disadvantages of internet, use of computer in education, using that as a technology enhanced medium to communicate lessons, advantages, disadvantages, pros, cons. You can also organize your uh, thoughts in that manner. You can also use the simple sequential form. You can say my lecture contains 10 points. Firstly, I am talking about this secondly, thirdly, fourthly, fifthly, eighthly, ninthly, finally to conclude. So, you can also follow that sequential order, so that it becomes very clear for the audience to follow and they know when you are going to conclude it, that is very important, so that they do not become impatient. And towards the conclusion, now I just want you to recapitulate certain things and then remember certain things, so that you do not commit these mistakes. Now, there are certain things you should watch out for. One, 
standing in a position where you obscure the screen. Look at the speaker here. If this is the projector, the speaker is just standing before the projector, so that the shadow of the speaker is here. Now, this is just a picture that I have put, assuming that there are some uh, lecture points displayed on the screen and if the shadow is covering this, this does not give a good look. So, this should be avoided. Getting lost in digressions, you show a picture, you tell a story and then you are completely lost, that should be avoided. Moving about too much, so instead of fixing a particular point, 2 point, 3 points, sometimes the speaker tends to move as if the person is on a walking session or on a jogging session, this side, this side, back side, front side, but it all indicates that there is lot of frenetic movement indicating nervousness and insecurity of the speaker. So, avoid that, try to fix yourself at a point where you are holding the center stage and you are clearly visible to the audience and keep an eye on the audience's body language. No matter how interesting your lecture is, if somebody is yawning on the front row and somebody is scribbling somewhere on the back, it is better that you make a pause and then try to break the monotony by introducing humor by telling an introduced, uh, interesting anecdote or simply asking the person why he is feeling bored or asking a question, so that the person is involved in this. So, take note of the audience's body language and some more presentation practicalities. In case it is a PowerPoint, you should email the files in advance to the organizers who are going to the presentation there in the venue and always keep a hot copy of this just in case there is power failure. Always keep transparencies just in case there is virus in the computer, there is virus in your uh, pen drive. Always bring a soft copy on disk pen drive just in case the uh, one that you sent before is not working. So, you have another one in spare with all the fonts and media included. What does it mean? You have a different version on your computer, those people have another version. So, you better copy this and then even have a PDF kind of file, so that you will be able to show it to them without any problem, no change in font. And always rehearse with the presentation computer if possible, because that computer you may not be used to, it may create some problem, it may have a different kind of font. And overall remember, you should practice, practice and keep on practicing. So, there is no shortcut to this and final tips, try to use some topics from your own experience. Unless you are forced to talk on something, if you can speak on something from your own experience, you will be more passionate about talking that topic and lot of enthusiasm you will have, try to do that and develop narrative skills. Look at why somebody is interested in some person particularly when he is narrating an in, uh, incident and why not with somebody else. The person obviously has some very good narrative skills, all of us can tell stories, but some can tell it much better than many of us. Now, observe those aspects and then you try to imbibe and inculcate in your talk. Never speak without a purpose. If you are not clear about why you are going to give a talk, if you are not clear about the influence that you are likely to have on the audience, do not give that talk. Support your argument with interesting examples, personal anecdotes and funny facts. So, this will always make the audience understand however complex the idea may be and overall communicate clearly. In order to do that, you should project your voice. What I am doing now for instance, even my voice is taken on the microphone and even it is quite clearly audible to the person who is recording it. I am just rising the voice little bit, so that it also makes one feel unusual initially, but one realizes that for the audience this is very important, literally to wake them up, keep them in control and then make even the last benches listen to you very clearly. But the audience will note if you speak softly suddenly if you start murmuring, the audience will suddenly note what is wrong with this person. 
if you speak slightly in a higher volume, louder tone, they are not going to mind. But if you speak softly and if you mumble, they will note it. Overall, you should communicate effectively. There is no point in giving a presentation that the audience cannot understand. Months pre spent on preparation, days spent on uh, preparation, rehearsals were taken, lot of attractive uh, uh, visuals were shown, but the audience did not understand anything. There is no point in such an oral presentation or public speaking. So, communicate effectively and focus on the message and try to communicate it clearly. Finally, when you are doing all these things, learn to enjoy yourself. It is a unique experience in itself. As I said, when you move from one speaking to another one, certain aspect of your personality is also growing, which would not grow otherwise. So, enjoy the part, enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself thoroughly. When you are able to enjoy, your audience will also enjoy it and be creative. Do not listen to what others are telling as how it should be done. Although I have used three lectures, this will be giving you some very important tips, but if you think, no, I should do something differently, please go ahead, do it, because that will set you apart and that will help you to develop your own style, which is very important in communication, developing your own style. Once you do this, you will have your own fans following you looking forward to your talk and waiting for you to deliver your lecture and come what may, they are there always to applaud you and give you that standing ovation. Now, very quickly some reference, although there are plenty of books available on the market, some quick references to some of the books, which will be useful if you want to refer further. Natalie Rogers's How to Speak Without Fear is a book that looks at this from a physical, psychological, emotional angle and also gives you some exercises by which you can overcome fear first of all. Of course, Dale Carnegie's all books on public speaking have become classics now. The first and foremost you have the quick and easy way to effective speaking and then there are other books by Nelson for instance on confidence in public speaking. There is a book on basic presentation skills by Gary Cronert and there is Karen Kalish's How to Give a Terrific Presentation and Shirley Hughes' Professional Presentations. I am not giving the editions here because they are available easily in Indian editions, they are available in so many editions, all sorts of editions. So, the one that you can get, you can have access to, you can always refer. Remember, if you can get a different viewpoint from a different person, learn from different anecdotes, it is always going to enhance your presentation. So, be open and receptive and thank you so much and wish you all the best in your next presentation. Thank you.